Mm-hmm. Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters. There are so many different aspects of spirituality that people like to hear about. The one that they least like to hear about is the one that's the most real. Two very great masters laid the groundwork for this. Yogananda, in Autobiography Yogi, there's a chapter called My Experience in Cosmic Consciousness, where his guru, Yukteswar, for the first time, touched him, passed Shakti, and master merged. He just said he lost all consciousness of his body, of the world. He felt like every galaxy in the universe was his body. He was expanding faster than the speed of light out of the outer edges of the entire universe. And he was merged. And Yuteshwar touched him, he came back. The moment he came back, which is more important, Yuteshwar took a broom and shoved in his hand and said, sweep the floor. He didn't let him say a word about it. He didn't ask him about it. He said, sweep the floor. Mayor Baba, fully enlightened avatar, great being, the only one that I've actually heard of that did this, he talked against Samadhi. He said, you walk around India, there's these gurus, these swamis, that can reach the breathless state, that can leave. You can put mirrors under their nose, no vapor comes on the mirror, there's no sign of breath, and they can stay, and that stay for a prolonged period of time. He said, that didn't interest me. What interested him was when they came back. What were they like when they came back? What did they do when they came back? And he said, they started yelling at their disciples that you didn't get this finished. I told you to do this before I was done. And he said, that's more important than where you went, what you did when you came back. What are they saying? Doesn't sound like the type of spirituality we all do. In yoga, they call it tapasya, you know, stress ourselves and strain ourselves and meditate for hours and hours doesn't sound like that. It's because the truth of the matter is, and I learned this back in, I think, 69, somebody talked to me about this. Earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. Earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. That is what you're doing here. That's what all of them, except for the fully enlightened, are doing here. They're here to help us evolve. What does that mean to evolve? It does not mean to renounce the world. It does not mean to not get married. It does not mean to not have children. It does not mean anything like that. Why? Because earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. If you need to renounce something, you must have a problem with it. Obviously, it's something that causes disturbance in you that you've decided, I, I can't deal with this. Okay? Perfectly reasonable. What your life here is about is learning to be okay with reality. You do not create reality. This world is not anything like what you think it is. I say it to you over and over again, it is a little piece of dirt spinning around the middle of black, dark, empty space. 93 million miles away is a star of which 1.3 1.3 million of this planet fit inside that star, and there are 300 billion of those stars in your one galaxy, and there are two trillion galaxies. What does your life have to do with that? Nothing. Well, that's a pity. In other words, you're missing 99.99999% of everything that's created, of God, of all that there is. And you want to talk to me that there's something in that point oh, 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 one percent that comes in front of you that you can't handle. So either you're going to manipulate the world around you so you can handle it by yelling at people, dressing certain ways, acting certain way. Do you understand that? I'm going to manipulate that. How big is that dot in front of you compared to what I just talked to you about? Compared to everything else that's going on on the entire planet at the same time. And 1.3 million Earths fit inside the sun. That's your life too. It's called reality. There's nothing more real about the moment in front of you than what's going on on Mars, what's going on on Jupiter. It's called what's going on. Do you understand that? Can anyone get far enough away from the personal 
to understand that there is no difference, none, no difference between the moment unfolding before your senses and all the other moments that are not unfolding before your senses. They're just what's happening. There are things happening where everywheres and they're all equal. The quasar exploding in supernova is the same as you, you spilt your coffee. It's something that's happening in the universe. Just because it's what's happening in front of your eyes, so what? Look what's happening to the left, to the right, up, down, everywhere. It's exactly the same. How do I know? If I picked you up and put you there, you'd say that was special. Whoa, something's fishy about that. It's special because it happens to be where you're standing. That's what it means to grow spiritually. You must die to be reborn. It's not about your meditative state. It's not about some experience you had. It's not about what gurus you met. It's not about that. It's not about what scriptures you've read. It's about, are you done with you? Are you done with saying, I'm the most important thing in my universe? You know, the most important thing in anybody's universe. There's a universe. That's what the most important thing is. There's a universe. It's everywhere. And it's equal everywhere. The fact that your consciousness is stuck so tight in staring at you, staring at this, this one thing. Ramakrishna, great master, right? He didn't use the word I. He did not talk about his body. He called it this. Are you talking about this? When he was dying, or he was going to die because he had mouth cancer, right? And he was not well, and they brought a doctor in. Great master, Ramakrishna. They brought a doctor in. The disciples brought a doctor in. And he was both a doctor and, you know, or a Vedic and psychic, the whole thing. And he met with the master. And he came out, and the disciples were so concerned. They said, the guru, right? he's a great master. And he said, don't worry. There's, there's not a problem. He has so much shakti. He has so much power. All he has to do is three times a day, bring that power down to his throat, and it will heal. It will go away. So his disciples got all excited. They went in to talk to him. Oh, Master, this is wonderful. And he was like a little kid, right? <laughs> That's a little kid. Oh, for you, I'll do it, and so on. Then an hour later, they heard crying coming out of his room. And they went in and said, what's the matter, Master? He said, I want to do it for you, but I can't. I can't do that, what you asked me. I spent my entire life taking the whole of my being and putting it on Divine Mother's feet. I cannot bring it down and put it on this. And he didn't. He knew who he was. He knew this is nothing. It's nothing. It's here today, gone tomorrow, isn't it? And by the way, it might be gone tomorrow. You don't know. You hear me? You're busy with all your plans and all your stuff. You wake up one day and you realize earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. We'll be getting into that. How do you evolve? By allowing the unfolding of the moments in front of you to be the unfolding of the moments in front of you. They are no different than anything else. They're not special. They're not for you. They're not against you. I don't like to talk about karma. You won't hear me talking about karma. And, and I'm not saying this is just me, all right? I've only been at it for, you know, 52 years. Is you look at karma as a punishment or a reward. Oh, she's got good karma. She gives a lot away. He's got bad karma. He left his family. That's not what karma is. It's not good or bad. Karma is you have set actions into motion because you did. There's a reason you did. There's a reason you left your family. There's a reason you want your name on, on some donation or something like that, all right? There's reasons. What comes back from your action is the teacher that you laid out because of your action. So it's not it's bad karma because you left your family, right? It's a lesson that you will need to learn that will come back around. And over time, this lifetime or another one, you will have attracted to yourself in accordance with the teaching that you needed. Isn't that a little nicer? It's your teacher. Earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. That's how you evolve. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're going to do actions. You're going to say things. You're going to do things. In a moment, we'll talk about why. But when you do, they set in motion energy. And that energy, in essence, says to the universe, oh, I need to learn things here. 
That's what karma is, all right? You get what you need, not what you deserve. You get what you need. Earth is a place that souls are sent to evolve. So what does that mean? It means that every single thing that happens to you has meaning. The very fact that you think it happened to you means you have something to learn. Because it didn't happen to you. It happened. I quoted you once before. In Zen, they say, flowers are red, water is blue, grass is green. In other words, things are what they are because of the forces that make them be the way they are. What's that got to do with you? That the flowers are red, the water is blue, and the grass is green. But I like turquoise better. Oh, you made it be about you. Do you understand that? But I had this rose and I was going to take it to a show and win an award and some ladybug took a bite out of it. You're doing that. You know how many roses there are? You know how many ladybugs there are? Anybody listening? You're the one who's making it personal. You're the one who's sitting there saying, this isn't what I wanted. This is what I wanted. Earth is a place where souls are sent to evolve, and that's not very evolved. What if I came in or I sat down? I'm going to tell you right now, it's wrong that Saturn has rings. Saturn should not have rings. I don't like that Saturn has rings. I don't like that the ladybug bit a rose on the planet Earth. That's called personal. You are making it personal, are you not? I like him. Why is he talking to her? I don't want to get old. I don't want to die. What is that? What is that? That is you making a royal mess of your life. Well, what is my life? What did Christ say? Let those who have eyes to see, let them see. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. There's your life. Here it is, right here. In a moment, it'll be out there. It'll be over there. It's everywhere. It's just you happen to be standing. That's the highest thing I can teach you. It's happening everywhere, is it not? In your house, in your town. There's things going on in your house you don't know about. There's things going on in your room you don't know about. And then everywhere else. It's just, it's just going on everywhere. It has nothing to do with you. There's a reason. Is there not a reason everything's happening? If a roach runs across your floor in your room, is there a reason that that roach exists and was in that position at that moment to run across that floor? Could science track that down, program all the offense of cause and effect, and that roach going to run across that floor? It has nothing to do with you. You didn't do it. It's not because of you. It's not for you. It's not against you. It is not true that it's raining on your birthday. It's just raining, and it happens to be your birthday. Why is it always raining on the weekend? It doesn't know it's the weekend. God doesn't like me. God loves you. Stop it. These are the real teachings. You are making a mess out of yourself, out of your life, and out of everybody else's life that you're projecting your silly old self onto. You shouldn't have said that. I can't believe you said that. I don't want to see you again. He has a stomach ache. He ate something and he had gas. And he said something. Stop it. You can't handle it? You can't handle reality? How about I say it to you that way? The highest species on the planet Earth, aren't you? You can't handle reality? What did Darwin say evolution was about? Survival of the fittest. Adaptability. This is what spirituality is about. Don't make it mystical. The truth of the matter is... Life unfolds. Why? Because it does. The Gita says something really beautiful. Krishna says to Arjuna, Arjuna, what is will be, and what is not will not be. What's so hard about that? It's so beautiful. That's all we're saying. Is it not true that what is is? How about I, I'm going to get harder on you. I'm not picking on you. I'm really not. All right? What was, was. That's easier to handle, right? I mean, what is okay, I can do something about it. What will be, I sure can do something about that. But what was, was? Can you do anything about what was? Which one you can do something about what was? It still bothers you, doesn't it? Which one are you bothered by what was? There, I'm going to take the easiest discussion. How silly is it to be bothered about something that's over, you can't do a single thing about it, yet you're letting it ruin your life? 
You know, Freud taught you? Are you not? Letting the past ruin your life? So you wake up and you realize spirituality is not weird. It's not some mystical mumbo jumbo thing. As he's sitting there saying, well, that's pretty silly. Maybe you should learn not to do that. Maybe Earth is a place where souls are sent to evolve, and that's a good starting place. Why? Because the cost-benefit analysis of allowing your past to bother you is 100% cost, no benefit. You decided to get bothered about something you can't do a single thing about. It's over. It's not going to happen again, and you still let it bother you. Maybe that's a good starting point for evolution. To me, spirituality is just down to earth. It's just the most obvious thing in the entire world. You don't need all this other stuff. What's it got to do with psychic? Nothing. Well, but, but some people are psychic. Yes, yes. If you let go of stuff and you're more open in certain areas, not all psychics are high, right? In certain areas, you see things that other people don't see. So what? It's just another part of reality. The Bible says in my father's house, there's many mansions. The great masters say there's many planes. Scientists say, string theory, all that kind of stuff say, a multiverse, not a universe. There could be other levels of vibrations of reality and so on. Fine. What's it got to do with you? Nothing. Why do you want to see those? You can't handle this one. <laughs> Yogananda literally taught that. He literally said, how do you expect to handle the subtler energies of the higher planes if you can't handle the gross energy of the atoms and stuff that's going on in front of you? And you can't, can you? That's what it means to be honest. And so you wake up and you realize this is real stuff. It's meaningful stuff, beneficial stuff. At all times, the spiritual path is a very, very great thing. As long as you don't make it all this mumbo jumbo stuff. If, and as I said, most people don't want to hear the real teachings. <laughs> they want to go somewhere. Why do you want to go somewhere? Because I can't handle where I am. I want to see visions. Why? Because I can't handle what I'm looking at. I want to see Christ. Why? Because I don't believe in him. It will make me feel better about myself. So you finally come down to what I call where the rubber hits the road. And you stop and you take inventory. Not where I want to go. Not what should have happened. Not what I wish happened. Where am I right now? Right now. In here. You're in there, aren't you? What's it like in there? Don't judge that's one of the greatest things to understand. Do not judge what it's like in there or you will go nowhere. It's not about right or wrong or good or bad or higher or lower. Don't try to be high. Don't try to have people think you're high or anything like that. Just look in there. How is it doing in here? And the only way you're going to tell is when the world runs through you. You can sit in a room by yourself and make up anything you want and do anything you want. When you get up, I want to see what happens. When that phone rings, when the doorbell rings, when somebody comes to pick you up, when you go to get dressed and it doesn't fit anymore, when you look in the mirror and you're starting to get the lines, or the hair is turning gray. Do you understand that? How are you doing with reality? That is spirituality. How are you doing with reality? Because if you're not doing good with reality, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to fight with it. You're going to say, I'm not okay with reality. I'm not okay with how you are. I'm not okay with what you said. I'm not okay with what I look like. And not only that, I'm not okay with what might happen. Oh, I like that one. You're not okay with what might happen? Anything might happen. Yeah, I'm not okay with it either. <laughs> I worry a lot. I got a lot of anxiety, right? What do you have anxiety about? That something might happen that I don't want. Or that something might not happen that I do want. You're doing that. The world is not creating anxiety. The world is just being what it is. It rains when it rains. It's hot when it's hot. It's cold when it's cold. People are nice when they're nice. And they're mean when they're mean. Have you noticed? That is how the world is. It has always been that way. And it's different everywhere. And it just happens to be a certain way where you happen to be standing. Are you okay with it? That is your spiritual growth. The day you wake up and sit there and say, Whoa. I got some work to do. All right? Why? Because you're the only one in there. However it is inside, you made it that way. No, my mother yelled at me. When? 
20 hours ago, 20 years ago. You know, it's not happening now. Well, why is it still bothering you? You did that. You have to own that. Not with judgment, not guilt, not shame. No, 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 no. There's no room for that. There's too much work to do. That's like sitting there saying, I'm going to learn to play tennis. Oh, I just hit it into the net. Oh, I don't want to play. What is the matter with you? Why did I hit it in the net? Because you need to learn. There's nothing wrong with hitting it into the net. You need to hit it into the net. You got your angle, your wrist angle is wrong. Same thing with learning piano. Same thing with learning everything. Same thing with learning to grow spiritually. You have the right to grow spiritually. You have the right to look inside and see. And what you're going to see the first time you look in there, and some people have been on this path for a long time and never really looked in there. What do you mean? They're trying to find techniques that make it so they don't have to look in there. <laughs> They're trying to find teachers, this, that, everything, different stuff that will make it so it's not like that in there. All right? Somebody must ask Mayor Baba. He's an avatar, fully enlightened master. He said, we're all caught in the cocoon of our own past storage stuff. There's some scars, we'll call some scars. You store stuff in there, haven't you? All right? Can't a master, they asked him, can a master come down, a fully enlightened master with, like, like with scissors, and just cut the soul out of the cocoon? You know what Meribah said? He said, of course they could, but they would never, ever do such a thing. You need to learn to work your way out. There's a reason you stuck yourself in there. What good does it do? It take you out. You just put yourself back in. Right? You have to evolve. It's about spiritual evolution. You have to evolve enough to say, I don't need that. I can't believe I'm still carrying that. Certainly the things in your life that you've done that with, that you're afraid of and then they happen. Gee, I can't believe I, I can't believe I freaked out over that. Right? Or you carried it for years, then you met the person and you realize it wasn't that bad. I know parent people that can't be with their parents, you know, can't go home and not fight and not have struggles and stuff like that. And then they grow. They really grow. And I just love it. They come and they say, you know what? I went home. They're just people. They're people on the planet Earth. I used to teach you that. Don't tell your parents. You know who your parents are? People who, if you go into their house, they don't call the police. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's people on the planet Earth, aren't they? There are people on the planet Earth like any other person. You're the one who stored all that garbage from your childhood, that what you didn't get and what happened and all kind of stuff. And so you wake up and you realize, you know, I have some work to do in here. And if I look in here, it's a mess. There's all kinds of fears I have and anxieties and desires and hopes and dreams and, and judgments. And where'd you get all of that? Where'd you get all of that? There's just flowers water and, and, and grass <laughs> there's just life it doesn't just so you don't get scared once you get clear what does it mean to be clear i'm not doing that in here i get up in the morning ready to see what's there and ready to deal with what's unfolding but w what do you do now just right away so you don't get scared it doesn't mean you don't do anything just because you don't have hopes and dreams and concepts and views and likes and dislikes and preferences, it means you don't have noise going on inside of you that's personal. Every single of those ones I just told you, hopes, dreams, concepts, views, beliefs, preferences, likes, dislikes, are history. Psychology tells you man's a sum of learned experiences. All that garbage inside of you, where did you get your likes and dislikes? How do you know what you want to be? There are impressions that got left on you from your past that molded the way you think, aren't there? Fine. When those are all gone and there's nothing in there but you, self-awareness, you will look out into the world and you'll see how you can help. Not help you. Not help it be the way you need it to be so that you feel better and make it not be the way you don't want it to be because it scares you and makes you worse. That's personal. That's based on your stuff, all right? There is such a thing as the word dharma. I never try to use the word because there's nothing in the English language that touches the word dharma. What it means is what you would be doing if there was nothing in you making you want to manipulate the world to be the way you want it to be. In other words, what's unfolding in front of you and how can you help? And you're going to find out that goes for your job. What job? Any job. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter. Any job you're doing, at least at that moment, the universe gave it for you to do. This is your job. There's something going on everywhere else, isn't there? Everything's doing something. This is your job. But I don't like, no, no buts. All right. Again, the Gita, it says, better that a man do his own task, though imperfectly, than do the task of another, though done perfectly. We all have our position in the universe. We all have what's unfolding in front of us. And this is part of that. You always have something to do. You have something to give, something to serve. I never understood it. Now I do. You're going to know what said, for the want of a safety pin, the universe would fall apart. But he's saying, if you didn't do your job that's in front of you, something else gets messed up. Even if you do somebody else's job better than they would, it's none of your business. That's not what's supposed to happen. It's not about success or failure or perfection or anything like that. It's about, am I open enough to be clear enough to see what am I supposed to be doing? I'm a mother. I have a child. It needs to be fed. The feeding of that child is your dharma. It has nothing to do with what you want to do or don't want to do or like it or don't like it or whatever the heck it is. It just has to do with I'm here. I have nothing else going. That's the key. I have nothing else going. I don't need anything. I don't fear anything. What am I supposed to be doing? That's a very holy thing. They tell the story. I, like, I, never, I never tell the story. I like the story about a samurai uh, warrior. When well, the samurai warrior tradition, if somebody kills your master, is your dharma to kill them. That's just how it works. Okay? You're a samurai. So this, this very low-level person snuck up and killed the samurai warrior's master, very lowly. And the samurai warrior pursued him, chased him to try to find him for a long time. And finally he cornered him. The guy was about to go bathing in a lake and there's no place he could go. And the samurai warrior came up, drew a sword, and this guy looked at him and nothing he could do, so he spit in his face. He spit in his face. The warrior stepped back, put his sword back, and walked away. And this lowly person who had killed his master started yelling at him. What's the matter with you, you chicken? Why are you running away? And so my warrior turned around because I felt anger. It wasn't pure anymore. You understand? It's not the act. It's why you're doing the act, where you're coming from. These are all part of Earth as a place where souls are sent to evolve. How evolved are you? Are you caught on that getting what you want is a joke? It's way overrated. Have you ever gotten what you wanted? Have you ever been afraid of losing it? Have you ever had to feel the tension of keeping it? Did you ever find out later you really didn't want it the moment you got it? You hear me? All right? And avoiding what you don't want, again, way overrated. That's not what you're supposed to be doing with your wants and not wants. You're supposed to be looking at this and saying, I'm sitting on a planet in the middle of nowhere in a giant universe with two trillion galaxies. Why did I make up how I want it to be? And eventually you will catch on to the bottom line because I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm scared. I'm insecure. I feel lonely. I'm not okay in here. That's why I have wants and not wants, fears and desires, because I'm not okay in here. Where you are okay, you don't have those. You're fine with the white lines in the road. You're fine with the trees you drive by. I once told you that you are 99.9% enlightened. I guarantee you, if you measured it, 99.9% .9 at least of every single thing that comes in through your senses, you're fine with. Clouds in the sky, air, people, words. <laughs> Look how much comes in. But that one, uh, he said, what? Who said, <laughs> to whom? Wake up. That's the problem. The problem is not life. The problem is you. The problem is you're not okay. And we'll talk about why in a moment. You're not okay, and so you think you need to manipulate life to make it be a way that will make you be okay. The trouble is you just keep doing it. You've been doing it your whole life, haven't you? Then why are you not okay? When will you wake up and realize that maybe it doesn't work? There was a toy you wanted, a boyfriend you wanted, a girlfriend you wanted, a job you wanted, every single thing, and you then wanted something else. 
There's something you didn't want, and you didn't want something else. Do I, do I know you? I'm psychic. Do I got it down? It's so true. It's ridiculous. It's so obvious, isn't it? And so you wake up, and you look, and you say, that's the problem. The problem is not the world. The problem is not that things are not the way I want. The problem is because I, I want them to be a certain way. Why am I like that? Why can't I drop down to this beautiful planet, spin around the sun a few times, and leave? I said, that was fun. <laughs> what did you see? I saw a lot. Lots of things happened. And did they challenge you? Yeah, they were challenging. Who, who wants to play a sport that's not challenging? How would you like your NFL professional football team playing kindergartners? I wonder how long that'll last. Okay? There's just not, not a thing in the world. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, it brought the best of me out. The best in terms of dealing with things. The best in terms of handling things. I grew. That is an evolutionary place down there. Do you understand that? They say in the scriptures, the Hindu scriptures, they say the devas and the devas, the gods and the goddesses and the higher planes, long to be born on the planet Earth where they get to grow instead of being in a place where everything's the way they want. How would you like everything to be exactly the way you wanted it to be when you were 14 years old? No, not look so good now, does it? That's the same always. There's no such thing as getting it the way you want and having that be something great. And for a short period of time, of course it is. Why? Because you had needs, you had problems, and it made you feel better about them. How come 50% of all marriages in the United States of America end up in divorce? It's not what you think it is. It is not true that somebody else is going to make you be okay. If you are not okay in there, there's a reason you're not okay in there. You can put a Band-Aid on top of it. Somebody who treats you so beautifully and so special, and they're really special, and, and you're proud to be with them. That's all wonderful. Let's see how long it lasts. There's a reason you're not okay. It's not because you didn't meet this person. You're not okay before you met the person. You'll be not okay about something else later. Buddha say to get to the root of things. What is the root of all this? The root of all this is, why am I not okay? If I was okay, I could be the way we've been talking about. I could wake up in the morning, I'm back. That's how I want you to wake up. I'm back. Oh, look, the room is still here. If you know quantum physics, the fact that that room is still there, that's a miracle. <laughs> this is not really there. There's nothing there but a field of energy, right or wrong. There's a quantum field of energy vibrating at different vibrations. There's no particles. There's just a field of energy. And it, it puts itself together and it did it the same way for this morning. Look, my clothes are there. You'd be blown away completely. All right? So basically you'd wake up. I'm here. Wow, I'm back. And then you'd see you're supposed to brush your teeth. Why? Because it's there for you. You just will walk through your life. It will present yourself things to do. You will bring the whole of your being into it, serving it with your whole heart and soul. It'll be the most exciting experience. Everything with brushing your teeth will be the most exciting thing in the world. Eating breakfast the most exciting thing in the world. Starting a car. Oh my God. You know what it took it there to be a car? And you can push a button and it starts. You'll, you'll see it that way you're not caught in yourself you're open you're open to all the experiences and you will go through the day and you will do what you're meant to do and it will do what it's meant to do and then at night you'll feel whole and complete and that's how every single moment of your life will be from then on that's a very high state you know, we'll talk a little bit later what goes on from past that why am i not there that's what i want you to ask why am i not there why can't i honor and respect everything that is why don't I honor that I'm on a little tiny planet in the middle of nowhere and there's green grass instead of sand or gas or fire? There's a lot on here, isn't there? Why don't I just be blown away by this existence? Because I'm not okay. Because I'm not okay. Down there deep, I'm not okay. I get insecurities and fears and needs and desires and all kinds of things. And those develop into hopes and dreams and concepts and views and opinions. What do you want to happen? That which will fix what's wrong inside of me. That's what you want to happen, isn't it? What do you not want to happen? That which will make it worse. Is that not that simple? Okay, then why don't we work there? Instead of running around trying to take classes and do things that teach you how to get what you want, why don't you find out why you want it? Why don't you find out why you're not okay? 
Because the truth of the matter is you're the most beautiful thing that ever walked the face of the earth. You are right now, at this moment, the most beautiful thing that walked the face of the earth. Christ, Buddha, blush when they look at you. And that's a true statement. Okay? I am love, I am light, I am spirit descended. That is what you are. Okay. If that's true, I'll take that one. But I can't get there. Why? Because you are so distracted by the garbage that you have stored inside of you based on your past experiences. You've collected every little thing that ever bothered. I mean, it's a question. If I collect inside of me everything that ever bothered me throughout my life, what's it going to be like in there? Bothered. If I collect inside of me from my youth, like Freud talked about, and you know it's true, everything that ever bothered me, what my sister did, what my mother did, what they didn't do, what Uncle George did, what I watched on TV, just everything that ever bothered me, I didn't let it go. I collected it inside, suppressed it, repressed it, resist, I don't care what you want to call it, right? Big words, I don't need big words. You do do that, don't you? If Sally doesn't say hello to you today, and she's a friend of yours, she walks by, Sally, she keeps walking, how you doing? What happens the next time you see Sally? Comes right back up, doesn't it? You kept it. You kept it. One stupid moment. 8.3 billion people on the planet Earth, they didn't say hello either. <laughs> You're the one that decided, no, I don't like it. And you did that with everything. With the driver in front of you, with the day it rained on your birthday cake, when the day this happened and that happened and somebody didn't call on time. and you, Everything. And you stored it in there. I'm going to ask you the question again. If you store everything that ever bothered you throughout your life, small things and big things, and you store them inside of your heart and your mind, what's it going to be like in there? Bothered. That's why it's bothered in there. Well, you told me I was filled with love and light. You are. You are filled with love and light that is distracted by what's bothering you. If I put you in the most beautiful place in the entire universe with lights going, God, things and everything, but I put a rattlesnake in front of you, you don't see the rest, do you? You see the rattlesnake. You get distracted by what you're staring at, even though all the rest is there all the time. Don't you dare think there's anything wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with what you did in there, <laughs> right? what you stored in there, and now you're distracted by it, and so you think that's you. That what you're staring at, the feelings that you're feeling and all that stuff, is your consciousness is not that, but that's what you're focusing on, and so that's what you feel. And now, in order to be okay, you go out there and try to compensate for what you screwed up inside of you. Let me use that word again. You try to compensate I'm lonely, my, my father lo loved my sister better than he loved me, and I, I could never handle that. And I, I tried to talk to him about it once, and he just walked out of the room, right? And how do you treat a four-year-old like that? And now every time I see my sister, I don't want to see my sister. I don't want to do it. Right. You did that. No, my father did that. No, my sister, no, no. It's an event that took place 40 years ago, and it's still bothering you. You did that. You can learn to say, okay, you know, daddy Treats her differently, treats me, it's fine. Everybody treats everybody different. I'm okay. Wouldn't that be nicer? What a better way to be. Wouldn't it be? You can learn to be like that. That's what it means that Earth is a place where souls are sent to evolve. You are going to face that which you stored inside yourself. Even if it's not out there, it's going to hit you. You mind your own business 40 years later and somebody says, God, my father loves me so much, you'll start crying. What they don't tell you is it doesn't have to be like that. Yes, it's true you did that. Yes, it's true you stored that stuff in there. Yes, it's true it's screwing up your entire life. And yes, it's true you're trying to compensate that with everything you do. You hear me? You meet somebody whose father didn't treat them as good as their brother. Oh, you're bonded, baby. That's a nice foundation for a relationship, isn't it? And so you finally wake up and you sit there and say, wait a minute, this is my house. I live in here. There's nobody else in here. Nobody else in there. You don't want in there. And it's going on in there. You did it. You didn't handle what happened and so on. And so you wake up and you say, now that's yoga. Now we've just defined spirituality. I got some work to do in here. Just look in there. See what's going on. Well, there's so much in there. How do I know what's going on? You'll know. It'll come up. Won't it? 
and you've done everything your whole life to make sure it doesn't, that's spirituality. That's the paradigm shift. I don't want this in here. I don't know how to let it go. I stubbed it in there. It's suppressed. It's hidden. It's whatever it is. I made a mess. But I don't want to be like that. I want to wake up in the morning and be happy I woke up, regardless of anything. I want to walk through the day and be grateful that I got to have the moments of the day that took place in my life. I want to wake up so much that I realize the moment that's unfolding in front of me has never unfolded in front of anybody for the history of time and never will. Right now, what you're looking at, no one has ever seen. She's not seeing it. It's a different angle. And it will never be here again. You're pretty special, aren't you? That's an amazing universe. That every single creature, not just people, every single creature experiences a different moment that was made for them, that was never there before and will never be there again. Wow, maybe you could respect that. And you start thinking like that. And you start realizing that while well, you have all this garbage, excuse my word, while you have all this garbage inside of you, you can't live like that. Because you're afraid of that moment. And you're afraid of the next moment. And you're resentful of the past moment. And that's what's going on in there. And then you're trying to build a new life for yourself on top of the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what Christ meant when he said you shouldn't build your house on sand. But you have to realize you can do something about this. So basically, how do you do this? Now that we spent an hour talking about that is the meaning of Is it not the meaning of your life? The meaning of your life is not to find somebody who compensates for the fact that you're screwed up. The meaning of your life is to work with yourself to release this garbage that you stored inside. How do you do it? My new book, I go into in great detail. I'm very impressed how many people read that book and want that book, all right? You don't start. You can. You can do anything. But you don't start by saying, oh, my God, the most terrible, traumatic thing that ever happened to me was this. How do I get rid of this? There's 800 million other things that happened to you that you are easier to let go of. You don't start the piano by playing Chopin or Beethoven. You start with the scales. You don't start tennis playing the Williams sisters. You sit there and get a tennis coach or a ball thrower and you practice. This is exactly the same. It's not about tackling that stuff you can't handle. That's like, I literally, that's like saying, okay, I want to play the piano. Give me Pathetique by Beethoven. What are you, crazy? Play the scales and the C scales first and play them and then try another and try another and then try twinkle, twinkle. It's the same thing here. That's my experience. The same thing here. Just take a breath and say, I'm going to walk into this day. Oh, excuse me. This day is going to walk into me. <laughs> you really have not too much of a choice. It's going to rain when it rains and people are going to say what they say, right or wrong. This day is going to unfold and it's going to come into me and it's going to hit my stuff. Not, I don't have stuff. No, it's going to hit my stuff. The tiniest thing. The driver in front of me is driving slower than I want them to go. They didn't use their blinker. Tiny things happen, don't they? And they bother you, don't they? They don't have to bother you. You don't start with the past. You start with now. What's the purpose of trying to get rid of the past if you put more in there? I told you, spirituality is very logical, all right? So you start by saying, I can handle this. I can handle that he didn't use his blinker. I can handle that it's rainy when I don't want it to. I can handle it, okay? I can handle that the power went out. I can handle things. It's amazing. If I want to, I can handle things. And so you start practicing handling little things that happen every day that you used to bother yourself about. I told you when I did the interview on the new book with Oprah, she picked out very deep line. She said her favorite line was, the moment in front of you is not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the moment in front of you. You drop ketchup on your pants. That is not bothering you. There's ketchup on the pants. But you're bothering yourself about the ketchup on the pants. And so you wake up and you say, well, maybe I need to learn not to do that. Wow, at least it's in my control. You're in charge. It's your life. It's your inner state. How do I not bother myself? It just naturally bothers me. It's called a habit. It's just like a drug habit or any other habit. You have a habit of being bothered by everything, don't you? So practice not being bothered. How? 
it's so much fun. Once you learn to do it, it's so much fun. You need to go back to work, and you're wearing slacks or a skirt or something, and you drop something on it, and there it is. And the immediate reaction is, oh, my God. And another layer of your mind says, I love it. It's like modern art. <laughs> like people rip their jeans to make them look special. They pay hundreds of dollars for ripped up jeans. I get to have this cash up on my pants. Nobody else has it. You get to do that, don't you? If you wanted to, you could do that. It's called positive thinking. That's one level you do it. Another level is you teach yourself to do a mantra. That's going on in the back of your mind all the time. So now you're going about your business and somebody doesn't use a blinker or it falls in your pants and you hear, I can handle this. I can handle this. Have that going on in there. I can handle this. It's over. That, what did you do about it? I handled it. That's doing something about it, isn't it? And then ultimately, what I teach is relax and release. What does it mean to relax and release? It means I'm in here. I'm okay before the catch-up hits the pants. A moment in the universe, which is pretty small, <laughs> takes place and some atoms fall on top of some other atoms, okay? But what happens inside of me is, ah! right or wrong, <laughs> something comes up. <laughs> and something comes up, all right? There it is. Relax. What? I can't make it relax. I didn't tell it to relax. I told you to relax. You in there that experienced that this stuff came up inside of you, take a breath, put your hands to your side, relax your heart, relax, and just let it go. Well, where will it go? It will pass through, just like everything else does. Everything passes through until you stop it. Don't stop it. Whoa, it takes some practice. Learning how to do that is not easy at first, is it? Why? You're trying to protect yourself from it. What you're doing is pushing it back down that's how it got there. You know, somebody made fun of you because you dropped something when you were in kindergarten. You hear me? And now you stored all that garbage. So instead, you reverse the process. You say, I can handle this. And you relax. And the next thing you know, over time, you will learn that there's a distance between you, the consciousness, that is experiencing the reactive energy. And you learn, eventually, you'll become a letting go machine. The minute it starts to come up, you relax. And eventually, and some people don't understand this, but I like when they do, not only do you relax, but you realize there's some space now between the energy coming up and you experiencing it. Then the moment you can feel it going up and relax, lean back. What does that mean? It's three-dimensional in there, guys. It's not just what you're staring at. There's a whole universe inside of you, above, behind. Why not? You're two-dimensional, one-dimensional, staring at your stuff. When you learn to let go, you realize, I can lean back. Just lean back. That's all. I beg you. Lean back. It's nice back there. It's quiet back there. It's beautiful back there. And eventually, you'll get to stay back there. And your whole life will change. You don't have to get pulled down to this stuff. And all of a sudden, it becomes easy to let go. Because not only do I not have to go down into the garbage, but I get to stay in the bliss. I get to stay in the shakti. I get to stay in the beauty of the peace that's inside. And you start voting for that. And it gets high. I told you, in the end, they'll go higher, right? That's high. That's very beautiful. They say that the nature of self is such an ananda, eternal conscious ecstasy. You'll start to feel that, not think it, not try you start to feel more joy than you've ever felt in your entire life. Why? Because that's where the joy came from. You felt joy because you got what you wanted and your mind shut up and your heart opened. And so you're able to feel energy flow. Now you're feeling it at its source. And it doesn't go away. If you don't leave it, it doesn't leave you. That's a true statement, okay? It's there. It's always been there the entire time. But you've been leaving it by staring at your stuff. It pulls you in. So you start practicing and leaning back and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Meditation helps. Things help. Techniques help. Stay back there. But it's not about the technique. It's about your ability to let go of what would have pulled you away. And eventually, it's not strong enough anymore to pull you away. And then you start to really go deep. Then it starts to, I told you that last time, it starts to pull you up. This stuff's now pulling you down. As you let go of enough and it keeps letting go, there's nothing pulling you down. And it starts to pull you up. And you feel this tremendous pull inside, intoxicating you, pulling you up. And where the great ones went, 
which are the pictures on the wall and, and others, all right, is they let go. That's the ultimate letting go. They died to be reborn. They let go of their personal sense of individuality and they merged back into God, back into the universe, back into who they are. You are the universe. Your consciousness is... Everywhere the ocean is, is the ocean. Every drop of the ocean is the ocean. Every drop of consciousness is consciousness. That's what is back there. That's God, consciousness. And your drop of consciousness is just a drop of that consciousness that can fall back into the whole. And that's what yoga means, union, oneness. So there's the work. Now you understand earth is the place where souls are sent to evolve. Every day, every moment of your life, you are given an opportunity of liberation. Liberation from what? From yourself. From the bondage of what you stored in there. Is it work? It's wonderful work. Artists, look how much energy they put into making a piece of art. Look how much intellect people put in solving something, right? You're taking on the highest task that could possibly exist. Self-realization. Finding the secret of the whole universe. Who are you? Where'd you come from? These are answerable questions, but not through your mind, through direct experience. Mm. Jagger Diff. <laughs>